Hello and welcome back to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast brought to you by Loserpool.com. Yes, it's a mock of Liverpool. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm your host, Harry Simeon. I'm joined by Boovy, good friend, and Manchester City fan. They do actually exist. Uh, <laughs> welcome to the brought show. A shirt, though. I can't believe it. I've actually brought a shirt. <laughs> Something slightly different today, um, sitting on the couch, more of a chilled vibe rather than the, the studio uh, vibe that we normally go for. But um, got Boovy on today to talk about the big game at the weekend. Arsenal, of course, finally managed a, a victory against West Ham on Monday night. There's a game to come against Standard Liège, but um, Sunday's the big one. <sighs> Manchester City, seemingly out of the title race now. Um, I, I've been reading all sorts of stuff on social media. People even questioning whether Pep Guardiola is still the man to take the club forward. What is your take on, on the whole situation at City at the minute? Well, if you start with Guardiola, the big thing for me uh, from a City perspective is that um, massive clubs, they back their manager at the right time. There are moments where Ferguson was linked to even the England job in the mid-2000s and suddenly Man United give him a crazy deal. Um, even Wenger, he's been given deals when Arsenal wanted to back him up and that's why he was there for, what, 20-odd years, Arsene Wenger. Guardiola is at the point now where I don't know if he, he knows how much the club backs him. He hasn't been backed as much as I, I think he wanted to be backed in the summer in terms of transfer uh, uh, players. So from a City perspective, the results have been poor. Some of the performances have been really poor. There's a, a regeneration needed. And it's that sort of stick or twist Pochettino kind of moment where you either stick with your guy or you get rid of him at, at the end of this season. I wouldn't want him staying for one more season only because I, I don't think that's healthy. So I'd rather start the trans transition now or not at all. So I think I'd like City to give him a, a three-year deal now or a four-year deal, whatever, like, give them a, a bumper contract now or, or at the back end of this season or you know this calendar year, if that makes sense, and get it done. That's what I'd like as a City fan. See, looking at it from an outside perspective, I, I, I read all this stuff about Manchester City and we hear about um, the, the company departure. That was obviously a big deal and there was no real replacement brought mm. in. We hear about the injury to, to Aymeric Laporte, which has obviously left City short at centre-half and, and as a result, Fernandinho is having to play there. But when I look at the Manchester City team and I watch them in certain games, particularly in some of the big games of late, I feel like there's something deeper. There's a deeper problem. Would you agree with that? Or do you 100%. think I'm, I'm sort of... Yeah, I, the, the thing about Arsenal, right, is that over the last two seasons, I think that they've been... I think Arsenal played some decent football in Unai Emery, especially in the, in the first season and the back end of Wenger's career as well. You were still playing decent football. We were we were, we came to the uh, Emirates. I don't know if you remember that uh, when it was like snow and it was like the blue, yeah. it was like a blue ball, the blue <laughs> lines, and we beat you three 0 and we were awful. And we, but we had three amazing goals. I think Sane scored. It was in yeah, that black. I, remember, I was one of the few people that attended. Yeah, there was no one there. And but I just thought, wow, that is Guardiola getting these one nil wins, keeping seventy percent of the possession, and, and that is what Guardiola is about. It's not really about five nil wins. It's about actually one nil wins times five in a row, and just getting. If you're not playing well, just just the, it's all about possession to make sure that you can play badly and keep the ball and still win. Yeah. And at the point, uh, the point of the matter is that we're not doing that now. So in these big games, we we are keeping the ball. But we're losing. And sides feel confident not having the ball. Whereas in the past, they'd be like, oh, we don't have the ball, we can't win. So so it's going to be a, it's going to be a tough few months in terms of, I think I think sides have found us out a little bit. Um, so it's, it's tough, yeah. I mean, looking at the, the starting eleven that you expect to start, um, there's lots of people calling for Riyad Mahrez to get more game time. Um, there's been criticism of Bernardo Silva. What would you do in that sort of front three? Of course, Aguero's out. <laughs> Jesus only seems to score away from home. So. Yeah, exactly, exactly that. Um, it's a really tough position to be in because I think um, we don't have any natural pace anymore on the side. Aguero's lost his pace, obviously, he's getting older. Sterling is pacey, but he's like... Uh, I don't know how to explain it. He's sort of he's pacey on the inside because he cuts in on his right foot. He's not an overlapping kind of like Gareth Bale type. He's never going to take the guy on on the outside. It's always going to. And be, if he does, yeah. he's on his left foot and it's not great, is it? Yeah. Leroy Sane is the player that I would have backed every day of the week to play against you lot because I think he'd have ripped you open. And now you can sit a little bit deeper and and, and sort of um, you can you can expect Mars to cut in on his left foot. You can sort of plan for that, but you can't plan for raw pace like Sane has. Um, so, so with Bernardo and Mares, they're both players that do that. They're both the same kind of player. Yeah. Um, so, so from my perspective, I'd like to see Bernardo drop into midfield. I think that's where he wants. That's where he sees his future in the team, uh, and, and get rid of David Silva at the moment in the starting line because I just don't think he's good enough. Yeah, fair point. Looking at the midfield, we've touched on it slightly. You talk about you know Rodri who's come in and he, he's struggling to adapt. I feel and and 
I think that's partly down to the fact that Fernandinho has maybe been pulled out of there, doesn't have him next to him, and, and he's being relied upon week in, week out. I feel like that's an area that Arsenal can can hurt Manchester City at the weekend. What, When you look at the Fernandinho situation, you look at it and you say, I understand why Pep Guardiola doesn't trust John Stones and Nicolas Otamendi. We know all about dodgy centre-halves. I know why, um, <laughs> why Pep Guardiola is doing that. But do you think that has benefited the team? Do you think maybe he would have been better off sticking with those two, mm. trying to patch it up that way, and not losing from the midfield? Because when I watch City, yeah. they've always been bad defensively, but now they can't even control the midfield. 100%. Yeah, that, that's the issue. I think, well, firstly, uh, the club don't want Fernandinho to basically ever play in midfield again, basically, because um, Fernandinho is on his way out, unfortunately. It's either this season or next season he'll leave. They've spent 60 million quid on Rodri. It's like buying a new car and not driving it yeah. because you're worried <laughs> that your kid's going to spill some you know, water in the seat or whatever. It's, just, it's like, I can understand why you want to get Rodri up to speed. But if the results are going well, you can keep doing that. And you can, like, if you're a top side, you can drop good players and, and, and bring them off the bench. If you're winning week in, week out, you can just justify it. You can't justify it if your best midfielder is still playing at centre-back when you've got two fit centre-backs on the bench. So it's not just it's not justifiable. And then from, from there, Ottomani and Stones were part of the defence. They got 100 points. They played the most, that is the most common partnership over yeah. the, the, the last two seasons. Um, company always injured. Laporte only came in halfway through that season. So why can't they be trained and trusted and developed and, and just brought in and maybe ha- trained to, to get back to that level of confidence again? Why not? They I mean, both cost that, 100 million quid. That will show a, a real distrust in them as well. I mean, their confidence must be really suffering from yeah. that. You know, Pep Guardiola has essentially said, actually, guys, I don't think you're good enough. I'd rather play a 34-year-old midfielder there than you two in there. That must have repercussions. And uh, I read an interview, actually, with uh, Ilkay Undag- uh, Gundogan, uh, where he was talking about maybe not enough has changed and that's why City uh, are struggling now. Do you, do you buy into that? Do you agree with that? Yeah, I do. Because the season we won the Premier League under Pep for the first time, we signed Bernardo that people thought, why do you need Bernardo? You've already got David Silva and Mar- um, not Mara's, you know, Sane, Sterling, all these players we already had. Why do you need another winger? And it just made it made, Ster- it made Sterling improve. And then when Bernardo came in, he made Sane improve. And it was just a revolving cycle. There's not been enough competition like that. Even Cancelo, I thought was a good signing because it's an extra fullback to challenge people. Um, at the moment, you look at the centre-backs, who's challenging Otamendi to improve? John Stones. That's literally what's happening. Stones, isn't, Stones looks so devoid of confidence, it's, un- it's unbelievable. And he had a great summer with England at the World Cup, one of the most successful tournaments in England history. And it sort of, it's just sort of washed off his back. It, you haven't seen him mature, have you? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, no, some of these players, Harry Maguire is mature, and he got a hundred mil, well, ninety million quid move to Man United. Some of those players have kicked on. Even Harry Kane still looks like that that sort of leader. But John Stone, I don't know what's happened to John Stones. Yeah, he's, a weird he's situation. suffering. He is suffering. I mean, from an Arsenal perspective, I'm not going to try and predict the lineup because we've got a European game, and the way our injuries are going at the moment, I, I simply couldn't do it. Um, so, how do you see City, in li- City lining up, and what is your prediction? So obviously standard sort of keeper. Then I think Carl Walker will, will come in, um, and then oh, I think it. Would, well, Stones is out, so it's going to be Otamendi and Fernandinho, which you know that's a bit of a roller coaster, a centre centre back partnership. And <laughs> uh, Mendy's looked class against uh, Dinamo Zagreb, so he'll I think he'll play and he'll he'll be a threat to you guys if he's if he's fully at it. Angelino is shocking. You do, if you play if we play Angelino against you lot, you'll be very very happy. You're right back. <laughs> yeah. If it's Bellerin who's playing, I know or... Bellerin will be out. Oh, is Bellerin he completely out? out yeah. Is he? It's probably going to be Ainsley Maitland-Niles by the looks of it. Well, he'll he'll love his day if if Angelino's playing. He'll love the match. Um, <laughs> he's that bad, Angelino. I think. But um, midfield, Rodri, maybe Gundogan and, and De Bruyne. Um, I'd like to see Phil Foden play. I think if you trust him now, he just scored a Champions League goal. He's played fifty times for City already. He's high, he's high energy. I think he's smart enough to bring down a player if you counter-attack. He's quick enough to, cap, to catch your lads. Um, I, I'd, I'd like to see Phil Foden start this, but it's just it's a naive thing to say, I think, at this point um, with Pep. And then up front, I think Bernardo, Jesus and Sterling, I think that's dangerous enough. That will cause you a lot of issues, I think. Absolutely. Don't deny that for a second. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm going to go with a score prediction of... I'm not going to give a score, actually. I'm going to go with a score draw. I'm going to keep it safe. Okay. Um, yeah, <laughs> sitting on the fence. Score draw, sitting on the fence. Um, yeah, that's, that's how I see it going. Um, yeah, looking forward yeah, to it. Class, man.